and welcome to 5MI Weekly. If you're interested in orgasms, you're in the right place. Because today I'm going to be talking about orgasms relative to the sexual response cycle. <laughs> so far in our mini-series on orgasms, we've learned what orgasms are, and how best to achieve them. But we've yet to ask the question, within what context do orgasms occur? Orgasms occur within the context of the sexual response cycle, which is simply defined as the biological, psychological, and sociological factors occurring before, during, and after orgasm. The sexual response cycle was scientifically discovered by William Masters and Virginia Johnson. The two made for a relatively interesting pair of scientists. Masters was a former Navy lieutenant and trained gynecologist who had an interest in studying prostitutes, while Johnson was a former country music singer and two-time college dropout who had an interest in studying sociology. They discovered the sexual response cycle by measuring men's and women's anatomies and physiologies while they were having sex. Eventually, Masters and Johnson measured more than 10,000 orgasms in 700 individuals ranging in age from 18 to 89 years and concluded the sexual response cycle is composed of four phases. Excitement. The excitement phase of the sexual response cycle is defined by activation of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system builds muscular tension, accelerates breathing and heart rate, increases pain threshold, and significantly increases blood flows to the penis, vaginal walls, clitoris, and nipples. Additionally, involuntary muscular movements called myotonia are seen within the excitement phase and are often in the form of facial grimaces. Plateau. Mm. The plateau phase of the sexual response cycle is defined by muscular tension, breathing, heart rate, and blood flow intensifying. Females experience an orgasmic platform during this phase in which the outer third of the vaginal walls begin tightening while males experience a release of preseminal fluid that is produced by the copper's glands. Euphemistically speaking, the plateau phase is referred to as foreplay. And typically, the longer the plateau phase of the sexual response cycle is, the more likely an orgasm will occur with greater intensity and duration. Orgasm! The orgasm phase of the sexual response cycle is the shortest yet most pleasurable phase. This phase marks the climax of muscular tension, breathing, heart rate, and blood flow. Neuromuscular tension is released after reaching this climax and the hormones oxytocin, serotonin, and a variety of endorphins flood the bloodstream, facilitating emotional bonding and relieving depression, stress, and anxiety. Mm. Resolution. The resolution phase of the sexual response cycle has the body returning to its pre-aroused state. During this phase, males enter a refractory period of being unresponsive to sexual stimuli. The length of this period depends on age, frequency of recent sexual relations, level of intimacy with partner, and novelty. Females do not have a refractory period and therefore have a greater physiological potential of having multiple orgasms. But ironically, females are also more likely to fake having orgasms. Masters and Johnson found the sexual response cycle occurs regardless of whether people are masturbating by themselves or with others or having oral, vaginal, or anal intercourse. And they found the length of time from the beginning of the excitement phase to the end of the orgasm phase 
typically ranged between 3 and 20 minutes. Although the time it takes for men to orgasm is often shorter than that for women, this difference appears to be less due to whether you're a man or a woman and more due to whether there is a suitable stimulus present during the excitement and plateau phases of the sexual response cycle. Whether a stimulus is suitable is less determined by our brain and more determined by our senses. Touch is the most likely suitable sense to bring about orgasms for both men and women. Sight is the second most likely sense facilitating orgasms for men, while hearing is the second most likely for women. Hearing is the third most likely sense facilitating orgasms for men, while sight is the third most likely for women. If a person is going to have any brain control over having an orgasm, then this person must have at least two pieces of information before engaging in social sexual activities. The first piece of information a person must know is what parts of their body they want their partner touching. And the second piece of information a person must know is what do they want to be seeing or hearing during their sexual activities. How does one go about gathering these two pieces of information? By exploring and communicating. By exploring, I'm talking about masturbating, which is best defined as an exploration of self. Not only is masturbation okay, it is actually directly and positively associated with one's mental, physical, and social health. By communicating, I'm talking about open, honest, and non-judgmental partner discussions about what one wants to sexually explore. These discussions are best driven by three lists. A yes, I want to explore this with you list, and mm. I may want to explore this with you list, and a mm. nope, I don't want to explore this with you list. Let me now leave you with yourself or others to do some exploring or communicating. Till next week.